Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm so thrilled to be talking about the wonderful short film Tula, which is shortlisted for the Academy Awards in the live action short film category. We are joined today by writer and director Bea De Silva, and I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the the writing process of a short film because it's so challenging to write and tell a story in such a short amount of time, and you know, in in under the span of 15 minutes, you've built these two very textured, very layered characters. This very deep and rich story. Um, and I was interested in just hearing a little bit more about some of the challenges of the script writing process in making sure that you're giving the audience all of the information that they need to jump straight in and engage with a story and to execute an entire narrative when you know you only have a limited amount of time to do so. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to be honest, um, this story was written in 15 minutes, actually. Uh, I just got inspiration and I started writing. And I imagined the um, the actress, the actual actress, because I met her like a few months be before that. So I, I knew her and I, I don't know why, I just like imagined the character being played by her. So I started writing, you know, and imagining I, I was having this conversation with the actress, Tamara Berbesk, which is absolutely wonderful. And it came so, so easy, actually. Like, I think that the hard part was not the script. It was... Um, because I have experience in writing, uh, but I didn't have any experience in directing or, you know, post-producing stuff. So I think that the challenge has been the afterwards of that, in fact. Amazing. You know, and, and speaking of Tamara, who plays the, the lead role of Tula as well, she's so phenomenal in this character. And, and I was interested in, you know, especially with what you were just saying about having seen her and really had having had her in mind, what were some of the details that you found yourself building into that character or that the two of you came up with through conversations you were having in pre-production that really were so centered around her performance and her being the person playing the central character? Hmm. So, see, um, I was telling you that uh, Tamara is very um, similar to the character. You know, I was I was kind of like writing the character and, and she came like all the time popping into my head. But the truth is that she's quite the opposite in a, in a way that um, Tamara is very, she's very fast. She has like a very fast way of talking and doing things and like connecting to everything. And I wanted the character to be very slow. Like, you know, like you she doesn't really care about anything. She just wants to have her job done and go home, like relax. Like she doesn't want any trouble. So it was very funny like to build this character this way because sometimes during rehearsals or even shooting, um, Tamara kind of like slipped, you know, and started doing things faster. And we were like, no, no, you have to slow down because this is what we're trying to, you know, to create. And, and it was very fun. It was very, very fun. Did you have much time to rehearse with with the two of you or or the three of you? Because you've got essentially two lead actresses within mm. the film. See, I think that's the good thing about short films is that um, since it's not like a, a feature film and you have like you have plenty of time. Maybe you don't have plenty of money, but you do have time, uh, or at least in this case. So we had um, months to rehearse. It's true that um, so the main character uh, uh, Tamara and I live in Madrid right now. And the other one, the, the young girl lives in the north of Spain and we're like four hours apart. So it's kind of hard to like, and she goes to school also and she had like exams and stuff. So it was difficult to, to manage, but we did meet some, a couple of times. And um, it was very interesting because we were three women from three different gener generations talking about personal experiences, about sex and like um, emotions and stuff. And it was, um, I don't know, it was cute, you know, to hear her like Ada's stories and then me talking from my perspective and then Tamara, which is 40 years old. So we're like very different, you know, but in the end, we did share some stuff. And also we could see how um, feminism is evolving as well. You know, when we talked to um, the younger one, the youngest, she was like telling us like, wow, girls, like that's so different right now. And it was I, I felt relieved, actually. <laughs> Did that, did that create a real intimacy and a shorthand when it came to filming, given that you had that time for rehearsal and that you didn't just use that time to go through scenes, but you also made it a very personal experience in working with both of them? Yes, yes, we did. Actually, um, we bought a bracelet for one of us, for each one of us, and we, we still have it. I think we're still wearing it until we know anything about the Oscars. You know, it's been a year and we still wear it just in case for luck. <laughs> so, so here you go. 
Amazing. You know, and you you were mentioning at the beginning that, you know, the the daunting prospect was directing because that was the first time that you were stepping into this. But I know that you you have worked in other productions in other roles before. And so how did the things that you'd watched and observed on other film sets carry through into the way that you approached this film as a director? See, um, one of the things that I've learned, uh, because I've worked as assistant or second assistant or third assistant to director, I've been like the last in the in the direction department. And one of the things that I've learned is that um, I need uh, or I want to be a director that is connected to the team. To me, it's very important to to know like what what is going on and like what the relationships are. I want a good um, atmosphere in, in the um, in the in the set I think it's very very important and one of the things that Tamara told me when we were shooting is that she was very thankful because she uh, like her job was easier much easier because we were all like cool you know like the set was nice and I think that's very important and sometimes directors I think they forget they're just like okay I'm just gonna do my job and my job is like to focus on the film and it's true but also you are directing people and so I think that's very important to have in mind. Um, and that's something I really focused on even more than maybe the shot, you know? I still have to learn like how to manage both of them, but to me, it was a priority to be connected to the people I'm working with in the moment. I love that, you know, and and speaking of the camera work in the the film as well, did you, at what stage did you start conceptualizing? How do I want to film this? Where do I want to place the camera? How am I envisioning the way that I'm going to move it in in between the two characters and scenes? Hmm. So when when I pitched the project to the producer at first and they were like, okay, we're doing this, um, they recommended me the um, uh, director of photography, Victor Benavides here from Spain um, and so I I talked to him like as soon as possible as soon as I could and I we started uh, talking and he helped me a lot like he was he I think I took a master's degree in in camera work with him you know in the pre-production stage uh, because he taught me a lot of things that I didn't know and it was really really nice to work with him because he always um, gave me you know space to you know take the decisions you know this is your film you have to decide but if you want my recommendation, this is this and this is that. And then it was really nice to, you know, to create and to to ask. Here's something that I, I think it's very important uh, about the question earlier about directors. Yes, you do have the last decision, the last word in, in the film. But it's also nice to be um, helped sometimes, you know, sometimes because people are there to do their jobs. And sometimes they do. They know more than you in certain aspects, you know, maybe editors, like directors of photography, actors even. So I don't know, I, I like to listen to the to the team and to, you know, get ideas from them. So that's something I would say about that. I also really love the the opening shot of the film where it's it's the only moment outside of the bathroom for these two characters and uh, the camera's just focusing down on the floor. So we see the shoes of a couple of students walking by and we hear them talking, but we don't see their faces yet. And then we see the juxtaposition of Tula's shoes before we pan up and see her as a character. Where did the idea for that opening sequence come from? Because you're already telling us so much about the dynamic in this space and the dynamic of this character just with those few visual details. Mm. Well, I think that comes uh, from the very first beginning of the of the idea with the, with the script, because I thought so. It's more more of a script a decision than a direction one, because I was like, see, like I want to present the characters to present the people that are going to um, to interact in this story, and I want to show how different they are and the different roles they have, and what's the best way on the or the most efficient way to show this in, in the least amount of time. And I came up with the idea with the shoes because I've been to a private school um, and I, well, we had some rules about the shoes you could wear and not wear and stuff. So, you know, that kind of like popped into my head. Like, I think this could be interesting. Like what shoes do lady cleaners wear? And and I was like, wow, they're so different. Ones are, are black and the other ones are white and ones are like very, you know, uh, elegant and the other ones are more comfortable. So I don't know, it kind of like, came to me like um I could have used other stuff like maybe the faces but that was too personal because I wanted to represent everyone in in that opening scene you know not not like 
I'm talking about this person or these people or these girls or these. No, I'm talking about in general girls and the lady cleaner. And in in terms of the location, you know, there's there's so much writing on it when you're filming a short film in one specific location. So what was the journey of finding the space where you ultimately ended up filming it? Because, you know, it needs to work from a logistical standpoint and being able to move within a very confined space. And then it also visually has to tell the story in the right way. Yeah, that was that was tough. Actually, the location. Uh, funny story. Uh, I've been told several times with this script that um, this story is old fashioned, that um, it's not necessary to tell it today because, you know, like sex education is all over the place and like everyone knows about it. And, and girls and boys nowadays, they know everything because of the Internet and stuff. And so when we're, we're going to shoot at this place that I, I really wanted because the place was beautiful, the location was amazing. Um, they read the script. It was actually my school, my um, the place where I studied. And they were like, oh, we're sorry, but we don't think the script is appropriate. And so at that moment, I was like, I could have been mad, but I was like, wow, thank you. Thank you so much. Because right now you're just telling me that what I'm doing is worth it. Like you're telling me that this story must be told if, because if you are saying that this is not appropriate, like to keep girls informed, then obviously it is necessary. So, so I felt kind of like happy about it. And also I wanted to shoot in, in my school because I, I got bullied when I went to school in high school, I got bullied. And so um, whenever everyone went to the, to the yard, you know, at the playground time, um, I didn't have anyone to go really. I was new in town uh, for two years. So I can, I went by myself. Um, and so I had to go to the bathroom, to the toilet and stay there during the, you know, playground time. And I, I just dedicated to read books and like write stories. And so the first version of this story was written in that bathroom of the school. So that's why I wanted to shoot it there, uh, but they didn't let me. So I was like, okay, so you're saying that um, sex education is not appropriate, but a girl being bullied and you not doing anything about it is whatever. So in the end, we ended up finding this really nice place where they, they let it us um, a film, but we had another problem because the window that you see in the short film, um, it takes you to a yard, but the yard is not property of the building, of the actual building. So you need to ask permit for permission to the owner of the yard in order to put um, the lighting things and stuff outside of the window. And we did ask and we got the same response. They were like, oh, we're sorry, but we don't want to contribute to this short film because we don't think it's appropriate. So we had to design a, a new uh, light design based on the interior, just with, uh, you know, like the little lights that you see on top of the of the mirrors and on the sides. It was really, really difficult for the for Victor, the director of photography. But I think it turned out really well. You've also used the space in a way that it feels dynamic. It feels like these two characters are constantly in motion and and moving within the scene, even though it is such a small space that they're in. Um, and so how did you and Victor set about blocking and creating the choreography of, of how you were going to move within the space? Because you've also got the use of mirrors that you need to be very careful of. So you can't just shoot any angle either. Yeah. Well, this was um, so like a few months before shooting, uh, Victor, my sister and her best friend and I went to the location and we spent a whole afternoon doing blocking. And so my sister was one of the characters and her best friend was the other one. And they just let me play with them as if they were dolls. And we kept just like playing and trying. And so in that way, you see, it's a short film. We had time and we could do that. And it was, I'm very thankful to them because it was very necessary. How did, how did you find kind of where you wanted to use the mirrors as part of the scene? Because there's moments where you're kind of very carefully moving the camera around it. And then there's moments where you're using that as part of a reflection of the characters as well. Well, I thought you see, like, since the, um, the bathroom is a very, very small place, I thought that maybe using the mirrors could be like amplifying it a little bit more. So in a way, I thought, why, why don't I use this kind of like um, magic trick to make it look um, a little bigger? And also, I don't know, I just like the idea of representing duality as well. Like you have the characters stating something, saying something, but then, you know, they're feeling something different inside. 
So I wanted to use that also like to create some kind of like conflict in the scene since I don't have anything else really to play with in in the space you know so it was pretty much the only thing that I could use the mirrors and you've also used the camera in a way that brings us right into the center of the story um you know it's it's very kind of like gentle motions of handheld a lot of the time and and longer scenes and longer takes um did you have an idea early on that you wanted to have those longer takes and that you wanted to use the camera in that way or how did that visual style come about yeah, um, what I talked about with Victor was that I wanted to give it um, a very, how how can I put it, um, classic look. Like I didn't want to, to innovate since I'm new, you know, I'm, I'm learning still. I didn't want to try to, to do something uh, very complicated about the camera work. I wanted to feel comfortable and I wanted to focus on the acting. Um, so first we decided to do like these classic shots, like, you know, more like um, simple. And then if you see, there's a moment where, uh, well, you know, the, the truth comes out when, when she says, you know, like, uh, I'm a virgin. And that moment when Tula stands up, you see that the camera is different because all the, all the time before that, the camera is being put in a tripod or, or a machine or something, you know, that's holding the camera. But then after that moment, when the truth comes out, the camera is being held in hand by the camera operator. So that makes it different in the in the way you see things. I don't know. We wanted to, you know, to make a change, to make a, a difference in the um, in the way we told the story with the camera. And I think that's pretty much the only thing that we that we decided. And with with the costumes of both of these characters, you know, kind of going back to what you were saying, even just about the shoes in that opening scene, both of the characters in essence are wearing a uniform, but you still have that choice of, okay, what color is that going to look like? What sort of material, um, you know, and and with the younger student, for example, was that based on the idea of uniforms that you were wearing when you were at that school or, or was it a completely different visual idea that you had in conceptualizing both of their costumes? Hmm. Well, we actually used this skirt of one of the schools in town, not mine, but one um, that I knew. Um, and the idea was to use, um, uh, how do you say, contrary colors, like that they were opposites. And when when deciding the colors that Tula was going to wear, we had two options. We had blue and we had um, like a very dark red thing. And we didn't decide until the very, like five minutes before shooting. We, we still got the two different uniforms and I couldn't decide. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know. Like, because it was, it is going to make a change, a difference because the bathroom is like very um, subtle, you know, that the color, the lighting. And if I put a, a very like shocking red in the middle, it's going to be obviously very shocking. Um, so in the end, we chose the, the blue. And I think it's better because it makes Tula be a part of the bathroom. It's like, and, and one more ele element, but it's part of the bathroom. And so then a foreigner comes in, which is the younger girl, but she's part of the bathroom. That's her territory. So I think in the end, that was a good choice, actually. And when it came to the character of the younger student as well, did you have an idea very early on when you were writing about what age she was going to be and how you wanted to write her? Because she's a character who is starting to experience things in the world, but still has a lot of naivety and youthfulness to her with a lot of things that she doesn't know. And finding that balance between the two is quite delicate. I I knew I wanted her to be the opposite of Tula. I needed, like Tula knows knows something about the world you know she in spanish we would say tiene calle which is like she's being out she knows things uh and so i had to 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 design or to write this character very very naive even stupid like you clearly have no clue what this is about um but also you know she's in love she's done things she knows things so in she's curious too you know everyone can you know em empathize with that and I think that um, 14 years old is a very uh, important age because you kind of, you're not an adult, but you're also not a child. So it's like a very awkward moment in your life where you think that you are mature enough to do certain stuff, but then stuff, but then at the end of the day, you still need your parents for so many things. You're scared of so many things. And that's kind of what I wanted to reflect, like that 
a really awkward moment where you are you could probably uh, manage certain adult stuff but not everything and so it's funny to to see like how how a non-adult would address an adult situation and how a non-child would address a child situation you know and so that's a perfect age where conflict you know it's ready to happen with Tula as well herself it's it's interesting because at the beginning you know she's she's kind of giving advice and helping but it's self-preservation you know she's she's very smart and logistical for herself it's not about the young student it's okay you've seen me smoking in here i'm not supposed to so i'm going to make you smoke a cigarette now so that i don't get in trouble yeah. um i'm going to answer this question for you so that you'll get out of here quicker and i can go home and then there's kind of a shift to her starting to care about this other, this young girl and and wanting to help her in a way that she can. Um, and so how did you find that, that space of when it stops being about what Tula needs and it starts being about her opening up herself to someone else? Well, I think um, I, I also, I wanted to make Tula very tough, but I also wanted to make her human and, and, and compassionate. I don't know, like she's, she's a good person. She's not a bad person. She she minds her own business and she wants to be, you know, left alone. But also if she sees a 14 year old girl who thinks that she's pregnant, she, she's probably going to help. She might not take the problem to home, you know, with herself, but at least give her some money, you know, to get a test or something. And in fact, that's a moment where I, I really like about the short film. Also Tamara is, is great at that moment when she opens the, the purse and she takes the the bill, you know, and 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 goes to the door and, and gives it to her. You know, she's a lady cleaner. She probably does not earn a lot of money, but still, she gave her a twenty buck, you know, dollar bill, whatever. So, to me, that was a very important moment where you see we went from Tula not giving it a shit. Sorry for that, Tula, like being like, please leave me alone. Like if you say something, I'll say that you she gives a 14 year old girl a cigarette like that's not good and then you go from this to to the other part you know to the other tula so i i wanted the character to have a transformation and to achieve that you need um opposites so but also you don't have to force it you know if you do it very like forced it could not look natural. Like you're clearly like this character is not doing this for herself. It's just God like doing stuff. The writer actually, but but I think in the end it worked really well. Also, Tamara gave it a very organic look to the to the moment. So, and within the story as a whole, you know, it's it's centered around these two characters and this interaction and and this idea that you have this young teenage girl that just hasn't been educated in the world because like even you experienced with the making of your film, adults just constantly don't want to talk about these things and don't want that sort of information to be discussed. And so how did you want to use this exploration of these two characters to, you know, in essence, kind of highlight a much bigger dialogue about young women in the world and, and even adult women in the world? Hmm. Um, I think that this short film is also like, um, like a, a monument or like, um, I'm giving tribute to all the people that help us at a certain point in our lives, giving us information that we need and that we can't, uh, that no one provides uh, to, uh, to us in that moment. Um, so sometimes it's strangers who do that. And usually because I've been in, in certain situations where I couldn't talk to my mother or my sister or my closest friends about something that had to do with, um, you know, women issues or like, pregnancy or sex or or delicate stuff and then you find someone usually a woman um that does not know you you don't know her and she gives you peace you know she gives you at that moment um she understands you and that's something that really got me and has gotten me like throughout the years thinking wow like we we can have a dialogue and we can feel so so understood by someone that we don't know just because we share something, which is being a woman. So I think that's a very, I think that's like the, the theme actually of the short film, more than sex education, which is very important, but also to like, to know that we share something 
and it's something more than um, your economic uh, status, your race, your religion, the everything, you know, it's above that. But be, beyond, like, beyond there's something and we can understand each other and it's- help each other. I, I totally agree with all of that. And it's it's such a wonderful short film and congratulations on the incredible success of it so far and the Oscar shortlisting. Thank you so much. Um, really appreciate your time and talking about it. Thank you so much, Bea. Thank you. You too, Mara.